Today's spiritual lesson comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I sh shall show you. So Abram rose early in the morning, <coughs> settled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. <coughs> on the third day, Abram looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for our burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on, your, on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a lamb caught in a thicket by storms. Abraham went and took the lamb and offered it up as a whole offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, we empty our hearts and minds to be filled by your love, grace, and word. So speak your words, speak into our hearts, because we need your voice. And I pray, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your eyes, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? With Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know He watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know
his eyes on the sparrow. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow. We want to explore what's out there. We want to explore what we don't know yet. That's why she constantly tries to touch what is out there. We are or we were like that, if not now, then back then. When we go into the unknown, there is risk, right? There is danger. And at the same time, there is discovery. That brings us 
excitement and fulfillment that makes us feel truly alive. But there is a price to pay, definitely. And that price is sacrifice. We all are aware, aware that there is no, you know, no fulfillment without sacrifice. No food without work. No marriage without commitment. No fame in, in many ways without risking shame. And no happiness, no growth, and no faith without sacrifice. In this text, in this sense, today's text, so-called sacrifice of Isaac in Genesis 22 is worth reflecting on and thinking about. In Judaism, this story is called Akeda, which means in Hebrew, binding. The binding of Isaac. This is the ultimate sacrifice the ultimate story in Jewish thought, much like what in Christianity. Crucifixion, God the Father's sacrifice of his one and only Son on the cross. And people have you know, different conclusions about this story. And some say God is abusive. And some say God is misguiding Abraham. And some say it's a story of religious violence at its worst, asking Abraham to kill and offer his one and only son Isaac. While others say it's a story of faith and obedience. And some say this story is meant to you know, forbid or ban the child sacrifice sacrifice practiced in ancient Israel like other nations at the time. Likewise, this story has infinite meaning, I would say. The more we dig deeper, the more we will find. That's the irony, mystery, and majesty of biblical stories. But today, I want to focus on you know, two things. I want to share two lessons. So first lesson is this. Faith demands us to let go of what we value most. Faith asks us to let go of what we hold on to. So for Abraham, what is it? Who is it? What is he trying to hold on to? It's definitely Isaac. He's one and only son. One day, God calls Abraham and asks him to sacrifice Isaac. Jewish rabbis imagine the conversation between you know, God and Abraham as follows. God, says, God said, take your son. And Abraham said, I have two sons. You know, Ishmael and Isaac. He answered him, your only, your, your only son. And Abraham said to him, Each is the only son of his, of his mother. And God said, The one whom you love. Abraham replied, Is there any limit to a father's love? And God answered, Isaac, you're everything. That's the demand. Then how can we understand this story? You know, this extreme demand in a more concrete way. Who is, what is Isaac for us? For me, it's definitely Luke and Phoebe, you know. And I say my life has two epochs, like two timelines. BL and AL. BL before Luke and AL after Luke. My whole world changed once he came into the world. Then he became my everything. You know, I told my wife uh, last week, you know, honey, my love for Luke is always 100, you know, just maximum, always. 
It never changes. When he is awake, my anger against him is also hundred. I don't hate him. I'm just angry at him. But that doesn't, that doesn't really change my love for him. You know, my anger is hundred, and my love at the same time is hundred. If love is my Isaac, what does sacrificing Isaac to God mean? Jordan Pearson, professor of psychology at the University of Toronto, says, first, it's dedicating one's child and dedicating yourself to the highest ideal, to the highest value possible which I wholeheartedly agree. For example, would you dedicate yourself, would you dedicate your child at the same time to God, to Christian faith, to Christian value and morals, although you know it's difficult to live up to that ideal, especially in the secular world, but you know it's good. Would you dedicate yourself and would you dedicate your child to that ideal, to Christian faith, to Christian values. If we decide to do so, the burden is on us. We have to teach them, we have to guide them, and we have to discipline them, and or ourselves. Second, we expose ourselves and we expose our children not only to the ideal, but also to the danger of the world. For Abraham, letting go of Isaac is the most difficult thing to do because he got Isaac when he was how old? 100 years old, right? After maybe 80 years of waiting, not just 25 years. For but for Isaac to grow, he has to let him go. You know, symbolic, symbolically speaking, he has to let Isaac explore and experience the chaos. He has to let Isaac experience and explore and experience danger and even malevolence in the world. That's the only way he can grow and mature. Jordan Pearson, in his book, 12 Rules for Life, says, this, this is one of 12 rules. He says, do not bother children when they are stable. Think about it. Do not bother your children when they are stable. What does it mean? It means, let them figure things out. Let them find order in the midst of chaos so that they can survive and thrive. Let them take a risk. For them to take a risk, we have to let them go. And I shared this with you before. When I first had looked to school, it was so painful. In every night and every morning, like before he go to, you know, he went to school, he, he cries like, I don't want to go to school. I still have that video of his first day at school when my wife went there to pick him up. And he was standing at the door, near the door, waiting for his mom to, to come. And what did you, what did you do? My, my wife asks. And he says, I cried. It still breaks my heart whether that's true or not, right? <laughs> whether that's true or not, it, it breaks my heart. It took weeks, it took weeks, many weeks for him to adjust there, not if not, you know, enjoy there. But his last day at school, before you know this pandemic started, his teacher was so excited that she said, he is behaving so well. So how come? How was it possible? Because I let him go. We as parents, my wife and I, we let him go. We let go of our most valuable. 
The second lesson I want to share with you is this. Genuine commitment to good always pays off. Oh, think about this. Let it sink in. Our genuine commitment to good always pays off. You know, God and Abraham, their relationship you know, by this point is somehow contract-based. Verse 1 says, After these things, God tested Abraham. Meaning, after calling him to leave Ur, his homeland, after giving him the promise of land and blessing, and even after giving Isaac as an heir, their relationship is still based on contract, not commitment. Therefore, commenting on why God tempted Abraham, Kathleen Schubert-Decker, Old Testament professor at Luther Seminary in Minnesota, states, quote, God imposes this one-time test on Abraham because God has risked everything on this man and God needs to know if he is faithful. End quote. And sure, Abraham proves that he is faithful. But let's think about it together. Let's think about this together. If we can conceptualize God as the highest good, highest ideal, so-called logos that brings good out of chaos. Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac means his ultimate sacrifice, his genuine commitment to good, even if that requires one's life or something more precious than one's own life for Abraham's case is Isaac. The end result is not simply the ultimate outcome. It's not simply God sparing or saving Isaac's life and providing a lamb for blood offering, but it's more deeper than that. It's blessing him and the entire nations in the world, entire people on earth. I believe he knew, he knew his genuine commitment to good will save him and save others. So he committed himself to God, to doing what was required of him. Now, what does this mean for us? It means we are called to do the best we can whatever job we've been given. We are called to show our best to whoever we meet. For example, as a pastor, as a father, if I give my best in whatever I do, its impact on my congregation and my children and anybody who hears this message, anybody who sees me doing something, what it can bring, what it can produce is incalculable. Likewise, if we show kindness the best way possible, if we say and if we do our best when we encounter somebody, and if we are really committed to doing it, how, how our words and how our actions change someone's life. A year later, or even 10 years, 20 years later, its potential is limitless. Therefore, I invite you, as well as myself, to offer the ultimate sacrifice, to give our best, trusting that somehow Somehow, my action will bear fruit. Somewhere, sometime later, you know, my words, my deeds will bring good, not only to myself, but also to others, if we are truly committed to doing it, whatever it is. Whether you are young or aged, 
whether you have a job or retired, that doesn't really matter. As long as you are committed. Forget about how it will come about. Forget about, you know, what this thing will bring. Because that starts job. Forget about the immediate outcome, immediate understanding, because as Soren Kierkegaard, 19th century Danish, Danish philosopher, says, quote, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Therefore, my friends, let us give our ultimate sacrifice whatever it is, and see how God changes our commitment to good into a blessing. Not only for us, but also for others. Amen. Let's pray. God, we commit ourselves to you. We commit ourselves to your word, to, to good itself in whatever we do. Even if that's difficult, even if that's costly and even dangerous because you have called us, because you have made us your own people. So help us let go of what we value and offer sacrifice necessary in whatever we do so that our actions, whether it's small or big, pays off and brings blessing to all. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.